life goals shouldn't take a lifetime. Life goals shouldn't take a lifetime. E-Trade actually did a great commercial on this. And if you're watching this on YouTube, there's actually a link in the description. It took me a while to find it. And I, I found the link to the video or I, I finally found it and actually uploaded it to my channel, put a link to it in the description. Uh, if you're listening to this on podcasts and you've got a second to, to look it up, it'll also be in the show notes for the podcast. And it's a good, it's a 30 second commercial. It's worth a watch. Um, but if you're driving or whatever, and you're listening to podcasts, uh, I'll just explain it to you. So it's, it's a, a little girl sees, uh, a video of Mount Everest and how it's the greatest mountain on earth, right? And she gets inspired to climb it and and her brother's like, keep dreaming. And so then it's this montage of her saving money and putting coins and dollars into her, her Mount Everest fund, a big jar of money. And she's putting it as a kid and then as a young adult and then as a middle-aged adult and then as an older adult. And she's saving all these things. And then finally it shows her packing her bags. And then in the last scene, it shows her and she's like, 80 years old, right? And she's climbing around Everest in a big snowsuit and she's got a walker and it's windy and blowing. And it looks horrible, right? And then it shows her two local guides and in their, in their native dialect and, and it's got the subtitles. Like one of them's like, you know, comments like, she she saved her whole life for this. And then the other one says, maybe she should have invested. And then it hits the splash screen. It's like lifelong dreams shouldn't take a lifetime. And, it, and, it's, and it's, a, it's a great commercial on, on that we... So often we will save for dreams, right? We will save for the things that we want to do, but we don't always invest for them. We don't always do it in the best possible way. And so, so life goals, right, shouldn't take a lifetime. They don't need to. And you should dream, right? You should dream dreams. You should have goals. You should desire more for your life and to do bigger things and to experience bigger things and to to get the most out of what you've been given. Uh, that's you know, part of what makes life sweet is that we can pursue greater things. And whether that's experiences, vacations, whether it's owning bigger things, whether it's making a bigger impact, right? We talked about that last week. You know, there are there are things that you can do, but we can do them better, right? Just because it's a life goal, just because it's these big monstrous things that we want to do doesn't have to mean that it takes a lifetime to do those. You know, we need to make a plan. If we really want to do some of these things, if we want really have these dreams, then for some of us, we just need to make a plan to get there, right? A goal without a plan is just a wish, right? And many of us, we make goals, but we don't create a plan to get there. We, we, we may think it's things, we might even write them down, right? Most people don't even write down their goals, but some people may even write down a goal or two here and there, but we don't make any plans to achieve them. We don't actually move toward those things. But if you're serious about your goals, then we need to create a plan to make them a reality. And so life goals often need financial goals, right? If, if, if your goals in life cost any money at all, then often we're going to require some money in order to achieve those goals. And you'll likely need a certain level of financial success in order to fund those goals, right? Money is not the goal. Money funds the goal. And if your goals are big and you've got great things that you want to do or experience in life, then we're going to need great finances to get there. And so perhaps you need to achieve some financial goals first so that you can achieve these life goals. And this may mean, uh, you know, articulating your goals or creating a plan to achieve those goals and doing the work to get there, right? Maybe you need to get out of debt, right? Maybe you need to, to live more simply and, and not buy so much so that you can get out of debt and dig yourself out of a hole so that you can move forward, right? It's hard to focus on the future when you're still paying for the past, Maybe we need to get on a budget and so we can stop wasting our money on frivolous things and instead of focus those funds on your true life goals. That's why we talk so much about financial goals. Really at the heart of any financial goal and the heart of financial planning and creating better ways, more efficient ways for people to, to meet their goals is often the financial goal is tied to a greater life goal, right? We're not trying to save a million dollars for retirement just so I have a million dollars, trying to do it so you can have a retirement of security and enjoy the relationships and the impact and all the other things in retirement, right? And so all the, the financial goals we create are just there to fund other goals. And so we, you know, we need to create a plan. We need to be able to articulate what do you really want? And if you've never taken the time to create a vision for your, for your life, to create goals, to create targets, to create a plan to get there, maybe that's what we need to do. And life goals don't need to take a lifetime, right? That's why we can invest. 
uh, there, there are a number of financial goals that you may need to hit in order to, to, to hit your life goals, but most of them will be that so you can do one thing, which is to invest, to accelerate your, your accomplishing of your bigger life goals by investing, right? Because for, for a lot of people, like we shouldn't actually be doing any investing if we have credit cards, right? If we have credit card balances, or we shouldn't actually be doing any investing if we have other things that we need to take care of first. And so maybe there's some financial goals we need to hit so that we can invest and more efficiently meet our life goals. Don't just save for your goals, invest for them. Don't just save for your goals, invest for them. Don't save for your dreams, invest and let the eighth wonder of the world, right? Compounding, let the eighth wonder of the world compounding carry you to greater heights. Create an investing plan, understand and believe in equity investing and owning the best business in the world and letting their profits soar and carry you to your life goal, right? Don't just throw money in a jar. Don't throw dollar bills into a jar and hope that eventually that you'll have enough in this jar to do anything big. You won't. We need to have a plan and to invest. It's unlikely that you have an Everest fund, right? An account that's specifically dedicated to your goals. And some people do this, right? They try to save in all these little accounts for all these different things. And you get little dollars here and there. And yeah, it's not enough money to really invest. So we're just going to keep it in a bank account. And they got a bunch of bank accounts. And that's one way to do it. But it's likely that by investing, your money will much work much harder for you so that you don't need to contribute as much to them. Right, so so you know here's here's an example, right? Let's see, so maybe you, you have two goals, financial goals. One is to retire, at, you know, at some age, right? And then the other is you want to fund your kids or your grandkids' education, right? And obviously the retirement goal, like that, there's financial goals mixed up in there, but so that you can enjoy you know time with your relationships and all these other things. So there's the financial that ties us, and this other one, like you want to be able to help your children or grandchildren get a good education so that they can have a good life. And there's a financial goal attached to that. And so a lot of people will will want to, you know, open up 529s or education savings accounts, all these things for all the different kids or all the different grandkids. And they're throwing a little bit of money here and there. And they're they're spreading what they're able to do with their cash flow too thin. And they got a whole bunch of balls up in the air and it's and you can't do a lot with with any of them because there's too many. You've got a quantity issue and, and you can't put the quality of contributions to them. So one of the things that a good financial plan can do, right, is it can establish, hey, what do we actually need to be putting toward this retirement goal? Like what if, you know, through optimizing your investment plan, through investing better in your retirement accounts and having a good strategy there, what if we don't actually need to contribute as much to retirement as we thought? Right. Or instead of what if what if instead of trying to put a little bit in all these different accounts, what if we stop doing it? And, and, you know, it's like, oh, but my 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 child is already five. My grandkids are already three. Like we got to start investing. Right. There's you're you're supposed to start early so that you can, you know, let all that compound for them. Um, But what if instead you put all that into your retirement instead? And and because your time horizon is probably further out than theirs is. Right. Because college is a very defined time horizon. Right. When they turn 18 or 19 or whatever, like they're going to college. And so you need to have it invested, right? We don't know what the market's going to do leading right up to that. And so you can't invest long term as long for college, right? You, you got to be able to, to turn something around and make sure that's available when you need it because it's a very defined four year time window, right? Retirement's not like that. Retirement is, is it's got a, a start time and it's maybe farther out for some of you than your kids going to college um, or your grandkids or whatever. Oh, and certainly from when it starts to when it ends, you've got decades there. So it's much easier to stay invested in the best business in the world for retirement than it is for saving for college. And so one strategy might be that we're not going to put any money in any college savings accounts for any kids. And we're going to invest all of it in our own retirement, in the best business of the world, and let that compound. And because we've invested so much more in our own retirement, that by the time those kids or grandkids get to college... We've got way more in our retirement accounts than we would have otherwise had and more than we need. And then we, we, when we've let time work for us across that whole time, right? And then we can ease back off our contributions to our retirement account and instead just cash flow college. Instead of saving for it in the past, we're in such a, we, we set ourselves up to be in such a good position that we can cash flow college for our children or grandchildren. And just write checks for each each semester, and 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 in that way, right? We're not saving for, we're not investing for college, but we're investing along the way so that we can still 
fun college. And there's a lot of different things like that, different ways that, that again, having a plan and, and, and knowing what the best way to plan for these things are can help you achieve better outcomes. But certainly just saving for your goals in a, in a coin bank or in a savings account is not the way to do it. Don't just save for your goals, invest for them. Right? Because when you're on track to retire successfully and staying successfully retired, and, and you may realize that you can do other things and <coughs> instead of putting so much in those accounts. <coughs> so have a plan. Create a plan. Follow that plan. <laughs> totally lost my voice here. I'm going to keep it. You know, I'm not going to redo this one. Uh, you're going to get the real deal. So yes, don't just save. Invest. Oh, man. <coughs> Woo. Yeah. Yikes. <sighs> Life goals shouldn't take a lifetime. Don't just save, invest. That's going to do it for this year. I hope that you, we've taught you some things, that we've built your knowledge, that we've built your belief, that we've inspired you to, to believe better and to take action on some things. You know, we got lots of resources. We've got, you know, four different uh, seminars that are out there now, workshops that we have online. We've got, you know, 52 episodes now this year, plus all the ones we did before that. We got lots of, lots of content out there to help you to do well in 2023. If you have life goals and this resonates with you and you realize, you know what, I need to make a plan. I need to do something about these because these life goals will take me a lifetime if I don't have a plan if I'm not working towards these things, but I don't know where to start. Like I, I you know, I've heard of these things, but just how do we do this? A hobby of mine uh, is, is personal performance and reading, you know, personal development books and, and, and trying to get better at, and, and all areas of life and, and my relationship with God and my, my relationship with my wife and my kids and my friends and, and, you know, physically and mentally and, and, financially and vocationally and recreationally, all the different domains of life. <clears throat> and and I kind of have this hobby of of right, trying trying to just pursue that and get better. And I've and I've found just different principles and practices that have really helped me uh, to improve in different areas of, of life. And so as a reminder to myself of these things and to keep keep my focus on the right things and to keep me on track, I've created some resources because again, I'm a big, big believer in in reinforcing belief, and and that that behavior follows belief. And so, if we want better behavior, we need to keep our belief in that good behavior high. And so, I've created some videos, podcasts, those sort of things, just to remind myself of these principles and practices that I need to be following. I've been doing a lot of these things for for several years now, and I've just kind of put these things together. And so we talked about some of those things last year around this time, end of the year. We call it a couple episodes on on a victor- on what a victorious cycle is and how to create one. And I've kind of taking that concept just as a hobby, you know, instead of watching more TV or just in my spare time, instead of wasting it, trying to even redeem some of that time and be a little bit more creative, and and to come up with some of these things. And so we've I've, I'm expanding that idea of the victorious cycle, and you know learning how to create visions and goals and, and plans to get there and how to execute better and, and right, what principles do we need to believe and what practices do we need to follow that will help us to get better in all areas of our life and to start achieving some of these life goals. And and I've achieved a lot of goals. I've missed some goals. Um, but I can see over my life, you know, it's, it's almost like the stock market where I have my ups and downs, but the trajectory has steadily been up over the last 10 years. And <clears throat> so I've made this stuff just for myself as a reminder, but also I'm opening up to anyone else that wants to, as we're going into 2023, you're going into a new year. If you want to improve, if you want to 
be better and you just want a place to start, then you're welcome to, to just check that out. Uh, it's victoriacycle.com. There'll be a link in the show notes of this episode, podcast, and YouTube um, to that website. And there'll be some videos on there. Again, this is just something I do as a hobby in my spare time. Um, so there'll be some things up there right away just to get you started. And then I'll release more content as I have time. Um, some parts of the year I have more time than others. And so it might be sporadic. I'm not trying to do once a week like I do with this. Right, This is all part of my re- real job, as we as we say. Um, and so I'm obviously going to prioritize basically everything other than releasing this Victoria Cycle content uh, and make sure that I'm doing all my other things that I need to be doing. But then again, in my spare time, instead of watching more TV or instead of, you know, spending, wasting more time on the internet, trying to do something more creative with that. And so if that's something that you're interested in and you want to get better in all areas of life and you want a place to start, you're welcome to check that out. And uh, again, that's victoriacycle.com. Maybe we'll see you over there as well. That's the it for this year. That wraps up 2022. I hope that this content's been helpful. Hope that it's built some, you know, increased your knowledge, built some belief, and inspired some action for you. And we'll see you before you know it in this new year, right away in this new year, in case financial goals are one of your priorities for this year. That we're gonna take 2023 to get better. One of the foundations for that is cash flow and and being better with the money that we have coming in and going out. <clears throat> So right away in the year, we're gonna we're gonna do a some episodes and a workshop. I was only gonna do four workshops, but we decided to do one more. We're gonna do a workshop on cash flow and budgeting and all that stuff uh, to help again build some knowledge for you, build some belief around that, and inspire some action in getting better with your finances. I need it, you may need it. So together, we're gonna explore this and and learn how to make the most of what we've been given in 2023 and potentially make it the best financial year that we've ever had. So look forward to seeing you next year. We'll be there before you know it. Happy New Year, and we'll see you next week. Cheers. If you enjoyed that, you would love being part of our free membership community. It's called Retire Membership, and it has a host of benefits all for free. For example, you can always buy my book, 3D Retirement Income, on Amazon. But if you join us at Retire Membership, we will send you either a hard copy or paperback for free, provide the ebook and the audiobook so that you can listen to it if you don't have time to read it. In addition to that, we'll also provide you with a bunch of content that you can't get anywhere else. For example, we have our quarterly Retire Mentorship magazine which comes out quarterly and has no ads whatsoever. It's just timely content to help you stay the course. We also have workbooks for our free online workshop to help you get the most out of those, flowcharts to help you make better decisions, and a weekly email to provide timely content that you can unsubscribe from at any time. We never ask for any payment information, and we never share your information with anyone else. We just want to provide timely content and help you stay the course to retire successfully and stay successfully retired. There's no reason to wait, so join us now at retiremembership.com, or you can click in the link in the description, and it'll go right there. We can't wait to see you in the community. Cheers. This podcast is educational only and is not investment, tax, or legal advice.